everyone, DFA here, welcome back to the channel and I'm starting a new series about yeah, ships I regret buying. I think it's kind of, kind of interesting to, to kind of look into that uh, after some time, you know, all the ships that you've actually bought and thinking that you were actually doing the right thing and it turns out it wasn't such a good idea. So we're going to take a look at a selection of ships that are actually on one of my accounts and I'm going to explain to you why I bought them and why I actually regret buying them after a couple of months or years or sometimes almost instantly. <laughs> so yeah, we're starting with the Napoli and without further ado, let us take a look at that thing in this stat sheet. And here we have it next to a selection of other tier 10 heavy cruisers. So what do we have here? A relatively small heavy cruiser, 200 meters, a decent amount of hit points. It's actually on par with the other heavy cruisers, no surprises there. Uh, don't let this citadel protection fool you. You will take damage like there is no tomorrow with that thing. And the fire flooding chances are abysmal as well. Everything will set you on fire if it does not flood you. So yeah, uh, for the rest, uh, concealment is actually pretty, pretty good, comparable with the Zao, so that's actually pretty good news, you will rely heavily on that because this is a brawling cruiser. The speed is also pretty decent, 34 knots, the acceleration is pretty average, the travel speed is pretty good, and the, yeah, it takes a little bit to, of time to, to turn, but overall maneuverability wise for a heavy cruiser it's actually not that bad. Uh, where it gets a bit more complicated, it's with the guns. Let me see that. So what is your main armament on that thing? 9, 254 millimeter guns with a garbage range of 11.7 kilometers. A garbage HE DPM of 28,000. It's one of the worst, if not the worst, at tier 10. So HE, it's simply not an option with that thing, but AP, it's also really not good. <laughs> So concretely, uh, playing that thing at range is almost impossible. Uh, you really have to get close to do something because, yeah, you do have a certain amount of secondaries to help you with, but yeah, it's, it's really not outstanding. I uh, almost forgot to talk about the equipment. Turret traverse 8 degrees, something that you want to actually improve to make sure that you can stay on target while you are maneuvering. Um, the uh, secondary guns, you get six 152 uh, millimeter guns, they're SAP. So uh, the damage here, this is the TPM 29,000, which is actually not that good uh, against anything that is uh, your size or higher. You're not going to be dealing a lot of damage. Uh, and the auto secondaries are SAP as well, 90 millimeter guns. So yeah, it's pretty much useless unless you're, <laughs> you're going after destroyers and, and <laughs> at the range that they can hit you, usually a little bit too close for comfort. Uh, pretty decent torpedoes, but again here nothing outstanding, especially when you compare them with the others. The range is good at 9.6 kilometers, but the damage again one of the worst at the tier. Indenburg 26,000, the Japanese 35, 44,000 with the Zao because that thing is just completely broken in terms of torpedoes. So yeah. Uh, worst damage for HE, worst damage for AP, uh, secondaries are not that great, uh, and essentially the torpedoes, decent range, but hitting power is also pretty mediocre, so yeah, is DA going to compensate? No, it's literally the worst at the tier, uh, so yeah, uh, ouch. <laughs> So yeah, it looks like that thing is actually compiling quite a nice collection of worst stats at the tier, I'm afraid, the range, the, <laughs> the, the DPM, <laughs> the AA, I mean, that, what that concretely means is um, essentially you're a brawling cruiser, that, that's all you can do with that thing, and as you see me here, the problem is, yeah, you're actually not that well equipped to, to brawl, you get three secondaries overload and three fuel smoke, so the idea is that you actually engage that, yeah, that's a good example, that is very typical of what will happen to you as soon as the DD is spotted, he decides to hide in the smoke screen, and the only thing you can do is run away, because you have an actual brawler that's going to chase you. So yeah, you see me disengaging right away. I'm not even going to, to ask any question. I'm going to get out of here. And of course, that 
<laughs> the destroyer with the worst HE DPM at tier 10 sets me on fire. They weren't doing that, but yeah. Okay, it is what it is. So yeah, Napoli, it's extremely situational, and that is my main issue with that thing, because it can work beautifully once you get it under the right circumstances. And if you want to have a good idea of what it looks like when it works, you can watch Boblin's video on it, because I think it was a very, very good example on how to play it. But what I'm showing you here, it's what your average experience will actually be like with that thing, because you really need a lot of stars to be aligned uh, to make it work, and essentially these stars Oh shit, you see, you don't have any sonar. So yes, you, you're supposed to be getting close to destroyers and destroy them with your uh, sap, <laughs> secondaries, whatever. But yeah, if they decide to fight back, <laughs> you'd better run for your life because you're going to be in a world of pain. Now, this is a pretty good situation for us. There is an isolated cruiser right in front and I'm taking a pretty big risk there while going first because if there is one of the Shimakazes right in front of me, he can pretty much pick me off while I'm rushing to get to the Marseille. So yeah, I'm, I'm really, really betting that there is no uh, enemy destroyer there. So I'm taking a pretty, pretty big risk. Yeah, and <laughs> it wasn't a destroyer, it was actually another Napoli. <laughs> so yeah, the secondaries are activated, I'm going to disengage right away because I don't want to, to get into a tricky situation. Use this full smoke, I'm going to use mine as well to get away, and I'm going to focus on a target that I can actually defeat, which is that Marseille. And so yeah, the secondaries, they will actually do some decent amount of damage on that thing, uh, but yeah, concretely, uh, the problem is... Ooh, you do meet quite a lot of battleships at tier 10 and unless you get very, very, very close at the range where you will really, really get punished by those main guns, the secondaries, you will not be able to hit the weak spots and uh, they will pretty much be useless. So yeah. Uh, did I mention CVs with that thing? Uh, because here it's actually a very interesting game. Uh, it's a pretty representative matchmaking of what you will get at tier 10. We have, I think, two battleships. Uh, one cruiser and three DDs, something like that, or, uh, or two cruisers and three DDs, and, uh, and essentially uh, <laughs> three cruisers in this game are actually Napolis. So <laughs> there's my Napoli, another one in my team, and <laughs> another one in front, which you just seen. So we will see how they actually perform. And so yeah, um, it's kind of a real, real issue playing that thing. Uh, if you have a center control map or a map that we actually where you really need a lot of range and people to oh Jesus Christ, for fuck's sake, look what's happening! <sighs> you see, I have had no idea. That's exactly what I was veering before yellowing that Marseille. Luckily, I do get away because the other Napoli spotted those torpedoes, but otherwise I would have been going back to port already. I would have been severely damaged. So yeah, it looks like I have an opportunity on a, a, yeah, one of the battleships there. And tell me it's not the Schlieffen. No, it's, it's not. It should be the Black Republic. Uh, because yeah, outbrawling a Schlieffen with that thing, just forget it. <laughs> it's not going to go very well for you. And so you can actually play like you're supposed to be in those scenarios. The DD on top is not going to spot me, he's retreating, so I do have a window which I want to use. Unfortunately, that fucker decides to hide in a smoke screen. <laughs> so by the time I turn around, I will probably be detected, and shit, this is exactly what happened. So something has detected me because I was outside of the concealment hedge. So maybe the DD turned, I don't know, yeah, there is another DD right behind. So I'm getting away from this situation as quickly as I can using the full smokes, and I disengage again. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I had to take a bit of damage doing so. So yeah, you see the, uh, the secondaries, you, you really, really have to, uh, to get close for them to be of any use and using the weak spots, but yeah. So yeah, the other Napoli, who is actually struggling as well in that battle, is sitting behind. So I was talking about the different maps because this is actually an ideal map from the Napoli. You get a lot of space to maneuver. But when you run an epicenter or a central control map, which typically tend to be ranged battles, uh, you're in a very, very precarious situation. You really have to flank, but typically you don't have a lot of room to maneuver there. So you're kind of at the mercy of the disambushing you. And of course, if you decide to flank and there is a CV on the enemy team, goodbye. As we have seen, that thing has literally the worst AA at tier 10. As a CV player, when I see that thing on the enemy team, I'm thinking fresh meat. <laughs> because it's really, really that easy to kill. So yeah, if I have to summarize it in one sentence, essentially, 
You are in a big brawling heavy cruiser at tier 10 with no armor, no range, no AA. You will get outspotted by most of the thing you're actually supposed to be hunting and you can really really hurt most of what you will actually outspot. So yeah, th that's kind of a thing, the, the reason why I really regret buying that thing. It can be fun from time to time, you get a really good game where you really rock the boat and get really nice scores, but usually, yeah. It's a little bit tricky and you see even against your top top targets you are actually not that efficient and yeah. Luckily I got this one in the shipyard just like most of you so I didn't pay that much for it, only the legendary camo and leveling the commander a bit but for the rest uh, yeah <laughs> I was pretty pissed because I did not have the steel when Colbert came the next month in the shipyard. And I'm sorry, but yeah, uh, I really wanted that Colbert. So yeah, uh, Napoli, first one of the series. Uh, let's see how the other Napolis performed in that battle, which again was under ideal circumstances for the Napoli. Uh, can we? Can I actually take a look at the player details? Yeah, I'm afraid that they did not do very well either. 34,000 and 37,000. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of it, I'm afraid. So next time we will talk about another tier 10 ship, which I actually reviewed twice and recommended in the past. So yeah, I'm going to have to swallow my own pride on this one. So stay tuned, stay safe, take care. That was DFA signing out. Bye bye.